Uh, I'm ready for the latest Corona takedown. <laughs> okay, let's see. Man, that's much easier than uh, using a saw. All right, so that's one down. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring eight, eight foot pieces. Now I know these are 10 feet, so I'm going to measure two feet from one side all right, so that's approximately here. I should have something to have make a straight line, but I don't. Nothing I can think of offhand that make a straight line around here. But it just has to be in the general vicinity because the patch to put these two pieces together is about a is about yeah. Well, I think it's more like this piece, this long, and I have little little patches that are about this wide that go across. Now with all that, um, I should be able to put these two pieces together. Because the shed is 16 by 10, so I'm going to do this across the long side. And 16, six, of course, half of 16 is 8. So right down the middle, two 8-foot pieces. I'll have a corner piece for where the water comes down. And I'll have an uh, end cap and, of course, a piece where put these two pieces together. Now, when I finish doing all of that, it'll be probably over six feet. Thus, I need this. And it's going to be interesting. Of course, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be doing any of uh, the water catchment on this, this trip. I know I have to get at least probably 80% of the electricity in the shed set up. Because the next time we go out there, it's going to be July. And the last time we was out there in July... Uh, we spent about, I don't know, at least three quarters of a tank of gas. I mean, it had to be a three quarters of a tank of gas uh, sitting in the Pathfinder. It was like either D or I would go in the Pathfinder and just sit in the air condition because it was just way too hot. It also it drained of all our energy, so we were only able to stay... Um, on the property to actually do some work, maybe four or five hours, because we were just so hot and so drained. And so that's the that's the purpose of, of getting the electricity in there and putting in the um, uh, the air conditioning. Now the water catchment is because, well, there's water out there. I mean, I have a brook, but I haven't gone down. I haven't been able to get down there. Because there's just too much uh, vegetation. And so all the water you take out there to drink is, is used for drinking, uh, washing your hands, showering for the, the, um, the, the toilet. Everything, and I have to bring all that out there, so all of that water we have to take out there on our own. So, and at the moment, I have 
six five gallon jugs. So that's 35 gallons. So um, I ordered another four. So that brings us up to about 60, ga uh, um, I mean, 50 gallons of, of, of water. So I have a container that's going to hold 50 gallons of water. I'm going to set this up. And hopefully by the time July comes around, if, if I have time to put this up, this will have water. So I can use this water and supplement everything that I, I was talking about. So we'll have this, this water. We'll have regular drinking water. Um, we should be okay. And of course, once I get the system basically set up, um, it's, it's an easy thing to, to just daisy chain one barrel after another. At one barrel after another, after another, after another. But you've got to get the first barrel in there. You've got to get that first one set up. All right. Excuse me. Okay, that's two pieces. Also, eight foot pieces are a heck of a lot easier to transport than ten foot pieces. I think eight foot pieces will fit in the Pathfinder. Ten feet, um, I, it will not, and it's only short by about a foot, a foot and a half. All right, so this piece, I don't know, I think this is also ten foot. Uh, the shed is only about, what is it? I think it's about 10 foot um, going up to the, this, this, the seam of, at the bottom of the roof where it comes down. And so putting the gutters over there, so this is not going to need to be this long, 8 feet. It's probably going to be more like 5 or 4 feet. So I might as well take the, the, the 8 feet with me. Because um, um, I have other stuff that comes off of the back of the gutter and flexible hosing. And the flexible hosing, those pieces are about two feet long. So it's like an accordion. So I can, I can do that, manipulate it off the back of the gutter, put it into this, and out of this, manipulate. I have another piece to manipulate and a couple of different pieces because I want to be able to decide what I'm going to do when I get there which would be the best thing, and then just, now I also have some stuff to put this, to, to secure this to the side of the shed. Um, Should sand off the ends, but I'm going to be cutting them again, so. One of the problems from being so far from where I have to go is transporting stuff like this. Uh, and so, right now, I'm just taping this up, so I'm going to be ready to s stick it in the Pathfinder. Hey, the internet is a wonderful thing. I'm always having discussions with people.
They say, well, how did you know that? I said, look, you got the power of the internet at your phone, at your fingertips. You can learn about anything you want. All you got to do is just punch it in on your phone. That's six. How, how lazy can you be to not just say, hey, I need to know something about this? Put it in the, the phone, the smartphone, boom. Comes up with thousands of answers. How do I learn about water catchment? Hell, I, I never heard of water catchment until uh, uh, a, a couple of months ago. How did I lo know about uh, hedge mowers? I had no clue until a couple of months ago. That goes for just about so many things about this project. That's why it's called leaving my comfort zone because I'm doing things that I never thought I would be doing before. I just think it's amazing. You know, um, oh, in case you want to know, as far as about electricity, well, that's my specialty. Um, I work with computers, but my main... Uh, um, Training is with you know, learning electricity, uh, industrial electronics technology. <laughs> That's what it's officially called. You know, so I got a, a, a general knowledge of all electricity. Uh, we learn all kinds of things. So that I'm not really that worried about. You know, wire, wiring up a, um, a building or something like that. I mean, I'm not an electrician. But I do know the basic practices. And wiring up something like a shed, that should be a big fat nothing. Wiring up a house, of course, that's a totally different idea. But to wire up uh, a 10 by 16 shed, a couple of outlets, a plug to the outside, some switches, you know, you don't cross anything, <laughs> and they make it kind of dumb proof because the wires are all marked uh, black, white, green, or they may have, uh, what was the other one? I think it was, it was blue, no, black, yeah, black, white, green, or um, black, uh, blue and nothing, you know, all kind. They have all these combinations. So as long as you don't mix, you put the same screw on. This one goes to the right side. This one goes to power. One is neutral. One is power. I don't know that much about water, but I know water runs downhill, okay? It doesn't like to be confined, and if I can get it into a tube and go into a dr uh, and drain out into here, it's going to fill up. That should be pretty basic. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of fancy stuff, how you get the water out, and all this other kind of stuff. Those are other issues. But at least getting the water. Once you have the water, then you can figure out what you're going to do with it. I mean, worst case scenario, I can fill this thing up with water, go in here with a bucket, and there I go. All right? You know, one of the things I, 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 I've noticed is that a lot of people talk about things that they want to do and it's just talk. I don't know how many people I, I know that just, just talk. Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. Five years later, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. And so by the time 20 years passed, here we go. Someone asked me, they were like, 
I don't know, they were in their 30s or 40s or something like that, and they, they said, well, you know, I want to go to school and, and get my degree and whatever, okay? It doesn't even matter what. There's a degree. I said, all right, go ahead. And they're like, well, I'm 30, and I only be able to go at night, so in six years, you know, it, it'll take me six years, it'll take me eight years, ten years. Yeah, so what? Um, what else are you doing? That's my attitude. What else are you doing? All right, so you don't go to school now. You're 30 years old. You're afraid that when you get out of school and graduate, you're going to be 40 years old. Um, okay. In 10 years, you're still going to be 40 years old. <laughs> you're so... To me, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you're still going to be 40 years old. So now you just wasted the 10 years. Now you got to do it at, at 40. And then you're going to graduate at 50. I have a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, this lady friend of mine, she stuck to it, through the whole thing, you know, kids, marriage, blah, 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 but she got her degree at 50 years old, that's what you do, if that's what you, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you, then do it, I want to do this as far as moving out to, to Missouri, I want to take nothing and turn it into something. I like the idea of when I was out there with, with D the first time, um, and we took that hedge mower and literally walked back and forth with the hedge mower, got into the pathfinder, drove five or ten feet, then got out and cut the, the, the weeds again. Got out, uh, uh, I mean, drove another ten feet, and we kept doing that on and on and on. Until we got to my uh, to the property, and we had to do that for about I think it was about 200, 200 or three hundred feet, almost the length of a football field. So what? I'm going to let weeds stop me from doing my dream? No, maybe not, that's that makes a story. Now I can say yes, that's what I did. And now uh, between D and I and that hedge mower and some some snips. We, we cut down a lot of area, and then we had, a, we, now we had one shed, now we had a two sheds, and so all of that's in there now, and now we can stay out there. Now, you know, we're, we're working on making this place a, a home. Oh, you know something that I almost forgot, uh, with the other, uh, on the other video, as far as what I was taking, I, I forgot to show that, I, you know, I also have a, a shelf over here. That I'm taking with me. I have this. This box is is filled with. I don't know if you can see the box, but it's filled with screws, nails. Uh, you know, when I go to Home Depot, I just buy screws, nails of varying size types, because uh, you just don't know. Um, at a certain point, they think I'm kind of crazy because I just keep buying stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff I may not use. I may not use for two, three, four years. But there's also stuff that I go, damn! I brought. The, glad I got this. The hedge mower was one of them. The hedge, the hedge trimmer was one of them. I'm like, why would I take a hedge trimmer to go with some land? Well, I'm glad I did. All right? Because then we probably wouldn't have been able to get through that land. If I had to borrow something or I could go out there with a machete, which I bought. But now, you know, we have a clear area. And now, uh, part of the water catchment system is ready to go. All right, let's see. Uh, well, I just put it over here, like it was before. A lot more convenient. The rest of this is just scrap. I may or may not take it. Who knows? Um, but I think that's just about it. So anyway, thank you. And visiting, thank you for visiting, leaving my comfort zone.